Hello, and welcome to the eighth installment in what seems the never-ending story of the restoration of my family's Perpentian Ebner Model 99V. In my last video, I went through the process of tracking down a new phono cartridge for my Perpentian Ebner. I also taught myself a very valuable lesson. Yo, there is power in there. Damn cap got me. Hopefully I won't do that again. Thanks to the Voice of Music website, I managed to pick up a new cartridge from their rather large stock of classic cartridges. With the new cartridge installed, my turntable and amplifier came back to life after 40 years. Hey, how about that? 40 years and it starts to work again. And there was much rejoicing. While I've reached the point in my project where all the exciting electronics and mechanical bits have all been done, now I have to get down and dirty and clean up the cabinet. So now let's head over to my woodworking shop and put some of those skills I learned in middle school woodworking class to use. There's really not much to do. Basically just clean up the cabinet and re-glue some wallpaper. So let's get started on that, shall we? So when doing one of these, it's fairly simple. You just give it a quick visual inspection, see where the type of damage is and what type of tools you're going to be needing. Just make a note of what has to be done. All this damage can be repaired fairly easily. Not particularly clean, but we can clean it up so that it's at least suitable for sitting on a desk somewhere. The other thing is to make sure, before you clean any of this, to give it all a nice little scrub with warm water. Clean out the inside with a little warm water, because there's everything in there from gunk to mouse poop. Anyway, so let's get started. So the basic tools are wax paper, of course, to protect your stuff. Glue. I always use carpenter glue, and then I mix it down to about a 50-50% level. Really any type of glue works well. I wouldn't use wallpaper glue or the original type of glue they use. This tends to be better over the long term. Of course some clamps, little clamps, some three scrub pads and some wood to clamp down with and of course pencil if you need it. And that's about it.
I dropped the head down and broke both of those knobs off. So now I put it in with heavy epoxy, as you can see. Increased the weight of the head a lot, but I should be able to balance that after I rebalance the system. Okie dokie. After, what? Almost a week of diddling around trying to get this to work. Finally, I can press the button. The motor goes. It goes down. It falls. It slows down. And then drops. Yay! Don't want to drop it on there, just want to destroy the needle, so I'm just going to go to the end. And there it goes again. So, oh, what problems didn't I do with this one? Spindle, of course, is a real problem. I had to actually jury rig a pin inside. On the inside here, when I was fixing that, a piece of gear left over from the original uh, wheel got stuck inside the uh, gears. It took me about four hours to get it out without destroying the gears. Then to get it unjammed very carefully and bent back into shape. And then finally, on the inside, on the inside here, I ran into a real problem. There's this little thingy here, right there. Let me zoom in. Uh, zoom, 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 zoom. You might not be able to see it. Right. Yeah. What's up to point with here? That little guy right here, this little bitty block, it cracked and decided to pop off. Now, a lot of the parts in here are unobtainium, and this is double unobtainium. There's just no way to get that in there. It's also cracked here, so what eventually I had to do was glue it twice. So far, it seems to be working. And... So a little tragedy today. I was just about ready to box it up and then I did this. I was taking out a tube and I tapped it against the, of all silly things, the uh, side of the player chassis and just chipped it, the very dibble, dip at the end. And now it's gone. Pity because it was a really nice telefunken. Oh well.
So all I did was solder in a little bit of wire there and there, but I, to do that I didn't want to melt the plastic, so I did a very cold solder. I think I was only about uh, 200 degrees centigrade. Very quickly either side and I waited about 5 or 10 minutes after each time I did one for the other one. And now it just sits on top of nice like that. And it should just connect. Well, put it back together and see what we get. Okay, so as with any engineering project or any project you work on, there's always something that nabs you in the end as you put a thing together. Seems I forgot all about this little thingy here, which is the pilot light. And the reason why I remembered is I tripped over this the other day. No idea what it is, but it kind of just fits there nice and it's almost the same color. And the question is, do I find a a 7 watt incandescent bulb that kind of fits in there and probably won't stay or do I build something else to go in place of it there Riley, do you like on. valves? or do you like transistors? Riley? Riley, do you like transistors? or do you like valves? transistors? Transistors, Riley? Riley? Do you like transistors? You like transistors? Transistors, Riley? Or valves? Riley? Riley? Transistors or valves? Not interested tonight. No.